Hello again. Well, as you can see, uh, we are no longer in China. In fact, we have traveled over the Pacific Ocean and we are now living in the United States. Specifically, we're living in a region that is located between all the Great Lakes called Michigan. And uh, we're enjoying some of the things that we couldn't do in China, such as canoeing. Because in China, all of the rivers are dammed or otherwise obstructed or polluted, um, except for the really small mountain rivers, which um, are not really navigable. So we're trying to enjoy some of the things that we couldn't do over there. But before we left China, which is about a year ago, a little bit over a year ago, we had one last grand adventure. Um, it was a five and a half day trip to the most remote areas of Guizhou and Guangxi province. And oh, it was something spectacular, as you'll see. Uh, we traveled to places that have been untouched by time, where all of the people were wearing traditional clothes, living their lives as they have for centuries or millennia even. And the roads were incredibly bad. It was really quite spectacular. Now, we shot the video with uh, my wife's iPhone, or the videos, I should say. We shot them with my wife's iPhone because that's all the equipment that we had at the time. Because uh, in China, YouTube is blocked and a lot of other websites as well, so I didn't spend a lot of time on videos. Um, save that for, for the future. But uh, basically, we, we shot a lot of different scenes. Uh, you know, some of the things we saw, the roads and everything. And uh, I really hope that you can kind of get a sense of what it was like over there because it was just something something from another planet. And uh, I miss it very much, but it was time to leave. So anyways, enjoy the show. And I think that this video would do it justice. Enjoy. As we embarked on our long and arduous journey to some of China's last wild and untamed lands, we decided to take a quick spin around the neighborhood to show you where we lived. Mountain scenes like this were the norm, and the further away from the cities that you got, the more impressive they would be. Just as you got used to the formations of one region, as you headed into a new region, the geology would be totally different, and this would be reflected in the scenery. It took over three hours to get a photo of one of these wild monkeys. It was extremely humid, been raining all day. My wife just happened to get a video of this particular monkey. And as it ran up the tree and sat down on one of the branches, that's when I got my shot and we were finally able to carry on.
Most people don't realize that China is home to many different ethnic groups, each with their own unique culture, language, architecture, clothing, foods, you name it. And the southern mountainous regions have the greatest diversity. When we were on the road, we couldn't afford to be picky. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner usually consisted of rice noodles, perhaps fried rice. So when the opportunity to eat some wild edible fruits arose, we did not hesitate. This spider in the genus Macrothele had a voracious appetite. Unfortunately, I missed the action as I was out searching for more grasshoppers to okay. throw into its web. It had already consumed two. The bites are potentially medically significant as they're related to the deadly okay. Sydney funnel web spider. Sometimes when I find myself in a beautiful location, I take a moment to practice my Gong Fu. It's something that I spent over half of my life trying to perfect. A goal as insurmountable as the mountains around me.
Oh, you stole. <laughs> One of the major advantages to living in a subtropical climate in a very underexplored region of the world is that anything I found, plants, animals, fungi, could be totally new to science. And regardless of whether they were or not, they were very exotic to a Dutchman such as myself. But all of them are in great peril for the environment in China is deteriorating rapidly and I fear that there won't be much left in the near future. Wow, there's also a pool. Wow, there's also a pool. Wow. During our travels, we would often encounter interesting animals crossing the road, such as this massive Dobson fly larva. And as we come around the corner, look what we have here. Stone shaped like penises to worship the fertility god.
more remote areas of Guangxi and Guizhou provinces, these types of traditional buildings were the dominant form of architecture. It was like traveling back through time, an unforgettable experience. It was so peaceful, I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. I was so inspired by the, the scenery and the culture around me, I, I was just taking photographs left and right. difficult to put into words just how terrible the roads were, and conditions were only worsening 
as the monsoon season was in full swing. It was both physically and mentally exhausting, and at times quite dangerous as well. But it was well, well worth it to see what kind of discoveries lie ahead. Can continue? There's a village behind, isn't it? Hey, wait a minute. I just filmed. Are you filming? Oh, okay. Can continue? Can you help me look at the picture behind? Do you need to continue? Continue. Continue. Yeah. Oh, uh, do you want? It is also difficult to appreciate just how isolated these people live. I mean, it took us over a half day on some of the most treacherous roads in the world just to reach this location, and well over a half day more to return to some semblance of civilization. The road being more of a hint than an actual physical thing. <笑>你们好啊你们好哦看见我两个孙女没有嗯啊看见我两个孙女没有嗯看见没有啊两个老的孙女也看见了吧啊真是哎呦慢走不用拍了差不多了再见<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><
タタラダ。やつ。成功。